Hey, Dr. Mike Quast here with iCairo Clinics. Uh, you've seen possibly my equals presentation where I'm gonna just go into a little bit more detail with that. So when you think about it, we've got stiffness. When a person has stiffness, that stiffness is a reduction in their range of motion. People will often minimize the stiffness and say that stiffness is no big deal. In fact, patients that I see, new patients always be like, oh, I'm just a little stiff, like that's not a big deal. They don't realize the big deal of that because when you're stiff, think about seventh grade when you were taught to stretch so you didn't get injured. When you're stiff and tight, your chance of injury is much higher. So that equals injury. Injury means I can't turn my neck all the way, but I feel fine. Then I go driving and I'd go to do a car check and I turn and I pull the muscles in my neck and now my neck hurts. We can adjust and work on that. It can feel better, but if we don't fix the inability, the problem's just going to come back again. So those injuries tend to happen over and over again, which then leads to degenerative arthritis. When you have an injury, the muscles compress and squeeze the joint together, putting pressure on your cartilage. The inflammation from the tissue also then squeezes and pinches everything together, and that degenerates into that arthritis condition, which then leads to really just an overall poor quality of life. Poor quality of life, why is it a poor quality of life? Because you're stiff, tight, you can't do things, you got arthritis, degeneration, you're taking pills, you're uh, having all kinds of issues with mobility. You maybe are having to have a joint replacement. Like there's a lot of negatives to that. Your inability to do the things you love to do is how that all leads. All starting from what? Oh, just a little stiffness, right? No big deal. Now, when you're talking to patients about this, the challenge becomes them understanding. So when we have stiffness and we measure it, so say somebody can't do the heel to butt test, three inch restriction. We work on it and it improves, but they need to understand what that means. So when we have a three inch restriction, you first must let them know, hey, you're reduced by three inches. You should be able to touch your heel to your butt. Do you know that? They typically will say, no, I didn't know, it doesn't hurt. And then you say, well, what do you think happens when you can't do that? They usually don't know. So then you have to tell them, well, when you have that restriction and stiffness, it's gonna lead you to be more likely to be injured. Those injuries then will be more likely to develop arthritis in that joint, which would decrease your quality of life and your ability to do things you like to do. So that's right on the step one, right? So I call these things to help you understand, they're kind of like gears, you're shifting gears. So you got first gear, second gear, third gear, fourth gear. And what I find with a lot of doctors and people who work in the industry, as you're trying to explain this, um, we often stop in one of these gears and then we just stay there. And it doesn't bring the full value of understanding that the patient really needs. So for example, hey, you're pretty stiff there. Did you know that? Well, yeah, I always knew I did. Yeah, okay. That's getting stuck in first gear. If I said, hey, you're pretty stiff there. Did you know that? The patient goes, no, not really. And I go, do you know the ramifications of that? No, I don't. Well, let me explain. When you're stiff and tight, what do you think your chance of injury is? Up. When you have injuries that happen over and over again, what do you think your odds of arthritis is? Up. When you get arthritis and degeneration, what do you think that's gonna to do to your ability to do things when you're older and your overall quality of life? That's what you need to say are similar things like that that walk them through the phases every time. So then you're doing a treatment. Say we're doing a ProSoft on that, on their, on their visit and now we just gained two inches. So, oh my gosh, we just got a two inch improvement. You then have to say to the patient, do you know what that means? So if you just say, oh, you got a two inch improvement, that's great, and the patient's like, yay. But then you go, do you know what that means? And I challenge you to do this because I do it all the time and they never know. So do you know what that means? It means I'm getting better, right? Better at what? What does it mean? It means that you're less stiff you have better range of motion, which is then allowing you to move better so that you don't get injured, which then keeps the pressure out of the joint so you don't get arthritis and degeneration, which then leads to an overall better quality of life.
Who doesn't want that? You have to have the conversation though. You can't stop at second gear and say, oh, a two inch res restriction, we got that to improve by two inches, isn't that great? And then the patient says, yeah, and then you just leave it there. They don't then put it together here. You gotta keep going. How about even with the arthritis? Hey, two inch restriction is better. Awesome, aren't you so excited? Do you know what that means? Well, I guess it means that that's helping. No, yeah, I mean, it is helping, but how? How is it helping? And you got to get them, by asking questions, you got to get them to actually tell you. Now, as you go through their process, you're going to be saying this so many times, they should be able to get to the point where they can repeat it back to you. So that you can say, hey, you can't, you can't do the shoulder test. That's restricted by three inches. Do you know what that means? And then they would say yes. That means that that stiffness and tightness means I'm more likely to have an injury when I'm doing something requiring shoulder mobility, which then it's more likely with it stiff and tight like that, it's gonna degenerate faster over time into arthritis, which is more likely to give me more inability to do things when I'm older, and then my quality of life is not as good. That's what they should be able to do, and that's taking it all the way through fourth gear. So boom, first gear, going through the stiffness and why it matters. Two, second gear, going through the injury, why it matters. Three, going through degenerative arthritis, why it matters. Fourth gear, boom, the quality of life. You have to like take them through each one so that they see the big value of what you're doing. If you don't help them see the value, I can tell you from doing this thousands of times, nobody puts this together on their own. Nobody. Doctors, nurses, therapists, I've seen them all. Do they ever put this together? No, but it's how it works. And so we have to make sure we're doing a good job of teaching patients by saying the right stuff and then training your staff, because your front desk needs to be able to do this. Your front desk needs to be able to walk through this. What do you think happens to your referrals when your front desk is out to eat with her girlfriends and one of them says, oh, my, my neck's a little tight today. And she says, do you know what that means? And she goes, well, yeah, it's, it's no big deal. Well, actually it is a big deal, that stiffness and tightness, that's gonna make you unable to move. And then when you do anything, it's gonna flare it up, that inflammation and muscle compressing in your joint. What do you think that's gonna do? Well, I don't know. It's gonna cause more injuries, more arthritis and degeneration. And what do you think will happen to you over time with your quality of life? as you lose that mobility and you have degeneration and arthritis as you get older, what do you think that's gonna do? Wouldn't you rather do something about that and prevent that from even happening? At least give it your best shot to prevent it from happening and try? Wouldn't that be better? Well, yes, it would. That's what makes common sense. And then you could be helping people at a whole nother level. So it's really, really key to make sure that you're moving them through this and not getting stuck in any of the gears. Make sure you move all the way through. Key questions to ask is, why do you think that matters? Why do you think that matters? Why does your range of motion matter? So what? Because they're always thinking that. So you always want to make sure you're, you're giving them the so what, right? Why it matters to them. Give them the so what. And then think of the questions you can ask to engage that so that they can actually have understanding and build the value to a whole nother level. Dr. Mike Ikaro Clinics, building the value and helping you be your best.